Tonight on Children's Hospital. Ten-month-old Dolly has life-changing surgery. She just thinks she's coming for a day out and she's having a major operation. It's stitches in the lip for 11-year-old Alex. Ah, oh, I felt it a bit. And one-year-old Scott is rushed into the hospital struggling to breathe. The brand new Royal Manchester Children's Hospital is one of the biggest hospitals of its kind in Europe. All specialist services are now under one roof in a space equivalent to 39 football pitches. Hello. Its dedicated medical team of a thousand work round the clock transforming the lives of the children who need it most. <laughs> Ten month old Dolly is Emily and Mike's first baby. Well, she's absolutely adorable. She's a treat. Just the way she smiles at you. We think she's absolutely gorgeous, but everybody else tells us that she is, don't they? So, it must be true. <laughs> but Dolly's smile masks months of pain. When she was just a few weeks old, her mum and dad knew that something was wrong. I know all babies cry, um, but the way she was crying, I could tell that there was something else there. She'd throw herself back in my arms, and it, sometimes it's a struggle to keep hold of her when she's, when she's doing it. And just, there's a look of terror on her face. <laughs> Dolly suffers from periods of agonising stomach cramps and has begun to vomit regularly, causing her weight to plummet. She got really sick one night and she just wouldn't stop being sick. And eventually it was getting darker and darker and it was like tar that was coming up, like black tar. We didn't know what was wrong with her and that was, that was the worst thing. Dolly's condition was a mystery for months, but it was doctors at the children's hospital who finally came up with a diagnosis. She's now under the care of consultant paediatric surgeon John Bowen, who specialises in gastroenterology. Dolly's got a condition called a hiatus hernia. The stomach's gone through a hole in her diaphragm into her chest. If you look at her x-ray here, her stomach is up here in the chest, when it should actually be down here in her belly. It's a problem that we see a lot more in adults and older children. I've not seen it for a long time, with this degree of abnormality in this age child. I suspect she was born with it. Just looking at the size of it, we're already seeing problems, but there's a real danger that it could become serious and, and potentially life-threatening to her. But the bottom line is she can't live with how she is. Mr Bowen needs to operate quickly to put Dolly's stomach back in the right place. Righto. Hello, Dolly. But this is major surgery, and today Mum and Dad must give their final consent for the operation to go ahead. What do you expect the operation to take? I'd expect it to be away from you for about three and a half hours. I'm planning to do the surgery to a cut in the tummy, and um, then really what we then do depends a bit on what we find. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, the things I always warn parents is I expect the unexpected, and if we, if we find things along the way that we weren't anticipating, those we, we deal with that as we go along. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. We just know that we can't leave the light years because it will cause them more, more problems. Yeah. And the danger is because the stomach is in the wrong place and, and unsecure, mm. there is a danger of further problems with the stomach. Before we can do anything, we have to have your, your consent, your yeah. permission for us to do an operation. It's a big decision, but Emily and Mike know it's the daunting journey they need to take if Dolly's got any chance of getting better. It still hasn't fully hit home and how important this really is. It is major surgery and to imagine her going through a major operation, it, it does scare me, it really does. In a week's time, Dolly will have an operation that could change her life. The hospital's A&E department is run by a team of 60. Leading today's shift is Professor Simon Carley. He's got 16 years' experience treating children, so he's met plenty of schoolboys with bloody faces, like 11-year-old Alex, who's just arrived with his mum. How gross is that? It wouldn't stop bleeding. It's like, well, we're going to have to get him to A&E and get him stitched up. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah. Hit your face. Yeah. What happened? I fell over and um, my lips hit the corner of a table. Oh no. Have you hit your nose as well? Um, yeah. Okay, anything? It really hurts. Right. You head right back? 
Before Professor Carley treats Alex's lip, he needs to make sure there's no other damage. Can we just have a quick feel of the top? Yep. That's all? Yeah, really so. OK. The nose obviously does look as if it's quite swollen. OK. I can't really tell whether it's broken at this moment in time. OK. It looks straight. Okay. It's only really an issue if it's moved out of place. OK. But at the moment it's so swollen I can't really tell. So we'll have to wait until that swelling goes down. That'll take right. about a week. Okay. If it still looks a bit bent, we need to do something about okay. it. What you can see but there, the cut's going to need immediate treatment. Not too bad. But you can see the two edges have spread apart. So I think we need to put those two edges back together again to get a nice cosmetic result. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, it's quite a sore bit of your body, this, isn't it? It's quite sensitive there. So I think what we really need to do is to make that as numb as we can okay. so that you don't feel it while we do it. So should we get you fixed? Right, OK, yeah. Alex will need stitches in his lip and they'll hurt. <laughs> okay. You put your head back for me, it's just going to rest against your cut, is that all right? He's being given an anaesthetic gel to take the pain away. A bit funny. Ah, ah. Baby, jump out my skin then. <sighs> really stings. I know, darling, I know it does, I know. But it'll numb it. OK. okay. It really stung when I put it on. It feels, just feels normal now, it feels kind of nice. Right then, young man. Okay. What we're trying to do is, it's just, you see that mummy's just fallen down, and what we're trying yeah. to do is just bring it up so it gets there. Give you a little bit of a bib. I'm afraid it might just run down your face at times, but don't worry about okay, it if it does. Okay, that'll be fine. It's fine. Um, that'll be fine. Let's go for that. I, I felt it a bit. Is it sore? We're just making the two edges of the wound look as good as they can so his body can do the business. It's looking good. That's two. There you go. Well done. Okay. Was that hurting or was it okay? I didn't feel anything. Really? That was so good, you know. Okay. Perfect, yeah. Great stuff. A handful of stitches later and Alex is ready to go. He might get some cracking black eyes. I think so, yeah. If his nose looks straight in a few days, he'll need no further treatment. What else, big? Ten-month-old Dolly's at the Children's Hospital today with her parents Emily and Mike for major surgery. She has a hiatus hernia that's pushed the whole of her stomach into her chest and needs an urgent operation to put it right. It is scary though. I'm it is, yeah, it is very scary. I'm scared. For her to have the anaesthetic and know that she's going to, to have a major operation. I'm trying not to think about it in a way, we're just trying to think of how it's going to be afterwards and, and try and focus on that really. Dolly's surgery is going to be a challenge for John Bowen despite his 20 years experience of operating on babies and children. The first thing that we'll, we'll do is get into a tummy and confirm what's going on and look at the extent of any abnormality that's there and the extent of how this is affecting her internally. At that point we can then start to plan exactly what we are going to do. So I'm going with a certain amount of, of nervousness and, 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 and trepidation because we're not dealing with something that's, that's a common problem. I've just spoken to Denise, so she'll come by and see Dolly just as soon as she's had her lunch and just make sure that she's happy <laughs> to go ahead. Within the arrow. Okay, dog. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. See you later, Mrs. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> As the operation draws closer, Dolly remains blissfully unaware of everything that lies ahead. Because she doesn't know what she's coming here for, it just makes you feel guilty that she's, she just thinks she's coming for a day out and she's having a major operation. So in a way, that's a good thing. But on the other hand, as a parent, you do feel like you're, like you're deceiving her in a way. We're ready to go. All right. All right. Yeah. But it's Dad who's got the tough job of taking his daughter down to the theatre. I feel anxious, scared, nervous and everything else what a parent would be, but I just try to stay positive about it all, really. <laughs> Although I don't really want to seem a little girl falling asleep. Hiya. 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 Good afternoon. Hiya, darling. Sweetheart. Maybe I'll just sit. Sorry, sweetheart. Oh, dear. It's a sad thing. You build yourself up for it and you prepare yourself for it, but it's, uh, it's never a nice thing to say. It's 
Thanks very much. I mean, I know that she's in the best care, but it's still, as a dad, it's, it's quite hard. You did so well. I feel really sick. <sighs> Dolly's surgery will take hours, and the extent of her internal damage and the long-term effect this could have on her life will only be revealed once the surgery begins. The A&E department at Royal Manchester Children's Hospital sees around 200 children a month with breathing problems. One-year-old Scott's just been brought in by his mum, struggling to breathe. OK, we'll just pop him on the monitor. Very lethargic and not like breathing very well and I could hear this very big raspy noise. Triage nurse Gemma Bowes sets up a monitor to check his oxygen levels. He's had a 10-day history of a chest infection. Uh, he's had some antibiotics, but it's just not quite getting better, is he, Mum? No. Struggling with his feeding, so he's got quite a significant history, so we'll get him seen by the doctor. Oh, happy bunny, are you? Scott was born with a long list of medical problems and spent the first half of his life in intensive care. He has an artificial windpipe that sometimes tightens, making it hard for him to breathe. With it being an artificial like connection, it can get narrower and narrower. So I always panic thinking, is it beginning to close and I'm not aware? So I always bring him even if they might be sick of the sight of us, but <laughs> at least he's okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Spat the dummy out. So Mummy wants to give you a hug. There we go, all right. All right. Scott's in the safe hands of Dr. Ed Tang, who knows he needs very careful monitoring. Okay, son. Okay, Baba. Oh, I know. That's fine. Good. All right. Oh, come here. Come here. He certainly is showing signs that he's struggling with his breathing. At the back of the throat, it's quite red there. Yeah. What I propose to is first of all, get an X-ray of his chest just to make yeah. sure there's no bacterial infection yeah. uh, going on as well. Scott's mum gives him medication if his artificial windpipe ever tightens at home. But today, Dr. Tang needs to rule out there isn't something more serious going on. An X-ray is the best way to show if Scott has a bacterial infection in his lungs. Cheese! Oh, it's a good boy. Hey! Oh. Ready? I'm going to take your picture. OK, we're all finished. Thankfully, Scott's X-ray shows his lungs are clear. Come on, chicken boy. I've done this before. Yeah. Senior sister, Marcia Johnson, can now give Scott the drug mum normally gives him at home. It will open up his airway and get him breathing freely again. Go to make your best Mama. Wow. Luckily, Scott's sister, Alexia, is on hand to help out. Two, three, four, five. Five, five. Good, all done, all done. <laughs> it's not long before the medicine's worked its magic and a and only round the corner if Mum and Scott ever need them. So obviously he's got his appetite back a little bit. He's made a total mess of the emergency room. <laughs> Are you better? Yay! <laughs> Ten-month-old Dolly's having major surgery today to repair a hiatus hernia that has caused her stomach to move up into her chest. The operation could take up to four hours and it's going to be an anxious wait for her parents, Mike and Emily. Big operation, but she's in good hands. I know this is the biggest part of it, but this is the final part of it. Surgeon John Bowen will only know the true extent of Dolly's internal damage when he starts to operate. Whenever you, you set out to do something, you're never quite sure what you're going to finish off doing. We think we've prepared for, for what we're going to find on the basis of the x-rays and the scans that she's had. But the subtleties of what we find, we'll only really understand more clearly once we get going today. That's how we live our lives. Mr Bowen and his team must first locate the hole that's allowed Dolly's stomach to pass through into her chest. That's interesting, isn't it? A wet swab, please. Wet four by four. But the operation's not without risks. But we're dealing with an area of the body under the heart, around the major blood vessels that run through the body. We're not far away from the lungs, so these things are organs we've got to be aware of. Mm -hmm. 
As the delicate procedure continues, Mr. Bowen gets closer to uncovering the cause of Dolly's pain. Pensive, a bit worried. It's just it's strange to think that she's being operated on now, like as we speak. You got to keep yourself strong and be positive about it, really. I really want to see her again now. Halfway through the operation, Mr. Bowen finds what he's looking for. There, you can see the defect there. There's a large hole in Dolly's diaphragm. This is how her stomach moved into her chest. Fair scissors, please. Dolly's stomach is now carefully secured back into the right position and the hole in her diaphragm stitched. After further exploration, Mr. Bowen finds no other internal damage. Done. Everything went very well, yeah. She just handled it very, very nicely. I've got a little tube here coming out of the tummy, which will just stay in for, for a few weeks, just to let everything sort of anchor up inside and stick down. And then right. we could just pull that. The operation's gone well, but everything depends on how Dolly's body responds to the surgery. Only time will tell now. We're looking for her symptoms to go away, the vomiting to settle down, and for her to put weight back on again. And Dolly's mum's worries won't be over till she sees her daughter well again. This is one hurdle, but I think the biggest one is going to be recovering. I think that's going to be the hardest bit, to be honest. It will be several weeks before doctors can tell whether Dolly will be able to live a life free from pain. Downstairs in A&E, nine-year-old Callum Ballantyne has arrived with a very painful wrist. He landed on it when he fell over. They've been playing with the kids and they've been pushing each other around and that, and it fell over. But it was screaming in a lot of pain, and Callum's not a mad, so I knew there was something the matter with him by the way he was crying. He's normally tough, aren't you? Yeah, you're normally a tough cookie, aren't you? I think it's broke the way it is. I've had broken wrist myself, and it looks looks like it might be. Right, should we go for an X-ray? Yeah. <laughs> right, very still now. The X-rays of Callum's wrist come through in an instant. Dr. Ed Tang has treated plenty of injured wrists in his six months in A and E. He can see if there's a break in seconds. Ed, my arm. This. Here should be nice and smooth all the way across on both sides. Okay, but you can see it sort of bumps out there, and on this yeah. side here, that unfortunately is a fracture there. Okay, the good news is that it hasn't really moved at all. It's what we call a buckle sort of fracture. It's because the bone's just buckled, you know, like a straw. If you bend it and then snap back in place, you get a little buckle on the side, and that's that's the type of fracture that he's got there. That's why it's so sore there. Right then, should we put your bandage on so you can go home? Sister Amy is one of the most experienced nurses in the department. She knows how painful a break can be. You hold your hand and I'll do your jacket. That's it. Well done, super. Callum's wrist will be in plaster for several weeks. He'll get a light cast now, and when the swelling goes down, the wrist will be replastered in the hospital's fracture clinic. Good boy. I'm glad. That's it. That's the worst bit done. Callum's wrist should be fully healed in six weeks. All he needs now is a drink, painkillers, and some sympathy. Six weeks ago, one year old Dolly had major surgery to repair a hiatus hernia that had pushed her stomach into her chest. Before the operation, she suffered excruciating stomach pain and hadn't gained weight for months. Today, she's back at the hospital with her parents, Mike and Emily, for a checkup. It's the first time she's been back since her surgery. What was she last time? 7.36 she was. Yeah, I could just sit around There we go. She's 7.55. Oh, brilliant. You are a big girl. Yeah. We're getting there, aren't we? Yeah. 
Dolly's finally putting on weight, and Emily and Mike say she's been a different child since the operation. She's sleeping better. Yeah. Which is, which is lovely. Um, I can put her down and I don't have to worry that she's going to wake up screaming. Also, she's eating a lot more, she's drinking a lot more. She just seems to be like a normal baby, really. And for her surgeon, John Bowen, everything has gone according to plan. All right, thanks. All right. Yeah. You've got a new baby? We have. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like that, doesn't Yeah, it really does. So she's growing very nicely now. Mm -hmm. So she was losing some weight prior to the surgery, and yeah. she's, she's recovered that, and she's starting to get back to where she should be. Yeah. She yeah. had this hernia. The stomach was in the wrong place. We fixed it in the right place, and all the problems that she was having because the stomach was in the wrong place have got better. Yeah. Dolly has demonstrated what so many children of Dolly's age do, having major surgery, is they bounce very quickly. The symptoms that she had that were causing such concern, they've all got better. So we can hope that she'll go through nursery and school and into her, her adolescence and the rest of her life with a normal future ahead of her. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, come on. It's just good that she doesn't have to go through that, that pain again. Now we can, we can look to the future and start planning things. Dolly's future's looking good, and her mum and dad are hugely relieved to be at the end of a long and difficult journey. Three-year-old Oliver has relied on a breathing tube called a tracheostomy to keep him alive for most of his life. It means he's never been able to talk. Daddy! Spiders. Oh no, there's a big spider in our house. In your house? Daddy caught it. Oliver's mum, Vicky, has finally given the go-ahead for a surgical investigation to see whether he could live without his tracheostomy and the supply of oxygen he receives 24 hours a day. All right. If Oliver didn't have his trackie, the possibilities would be endless. 